They will get one shot at a green-white checker. The green flag will wave, then the white flag and the checker flag. Only one shot. The fans are on their feet. Here come the drivers, and the green flag waves. Carl Edward trying to make a move inside of said for third spot. Montoya trying to rocket his way into turn one and not get dive bombed by Hamlin. He got a great restart, Montoya did. That gave him a little distance on him getting in turn one. That's exactly what Montoya needed, a good restart like that. He needs to get through a couple more corners because Denny's not letting him breathe at all. He's right on his bumper. Now Montoya gets through turn four and gets to those S's where he's so good, maybe he can get some room right there. But boy, I tell you what, I'd be driving my guts out right now because you know Denny is. Juan Pablo Montoya trying to remain poised and composed. He has come from 19th position in the final 24 laps after a problem with fueling the car. Connie there with her hands folded, hoping she is going to see her husband win for the first time as a NASCAR driver. Turn six, the most important turn. Exit that turn wide open if you can. Pablo's at Juan Pablo Montoya's been very good there. You see he picked a little ground up right now. He's got about three car lengths between him and Denny Hamlin. That's some pretty good breathing room because he's been better in turn seven. He's entered right now than anybody in the track all day long today. Good exit off of turn eight right there. A lot of straightaway speed. He's looking good right now, guys. He slipped up a little bit off that corner, though. White flag this time by. He's got White one flag. more tip. He's got to hold off Hamlin this time. This is Denny Hamlin's best shot in turn one if he can get there on the final lap. Connie Montoya knows that he's he's got him by two car lengths. She has seen her husband time it again, pull it off at Indianapolis. Cars off the racetrack. That was Reagan Smith running in fifth position. He son comes back on the track, doesn't lose hardly hard anything, so he's he's kind of back in the game with Carl Edwards again. No problem with Reagan Smith. Now, Juan Pablo, pretty good lead going into cut to turn four. Another passing zone, but he's not got anybody messing with him now. That's off a of turn. Four, Andy, that's a real tough, leading to the S's. Again, that's where he's good at. Just a few corners to go here. Just got to hit his marks. Remember in qualifying, he overdrove the S's, and he jammed on the brakes and smoked the tires. It cost him a chance at the pole. He was frustrated. He was downright angry. He came out of the car throwing things, saying the expectations are that I'm going to come to Mexico and win an NASCAR Bush Series race. A good turn, exit off of turn six, a lot of speed. Coming in a seven, up off eight right now. Ladies and gentlemen, open up the NASCAR history books because out of turn eight, one, Pablo Montoya becomes the yeah, next winner of the NASCAR Bush Series. Juan Pablo Montoya has won it here at Mexico City, and the fans are going wild. What an effort. And Scott Prude has made it up to fifth position. That's his teammate, so it's not so bad. Prude has come from 17th all the way up to fifth. He had a great car, too. You know, this is bittersweet to see Montoya win this thing, but he's got to be feeling really blue right now that he had contact with his own teammate. Reagan Smith comes across the line with a right front corner, tore off his car. There's a celebration. And give a call to Brad Parrott and his entire crew. And Andy, you know the feeling of Brad Parrott right now to have to come from as far back on all the things they had to overcome. Never give up. That's what Brad knows. Never give up. Never give up. Mike Massaro with Brad Parrott. Two oh, laps to go. Murray's out. Here comes Harvick for second, and McMurray will never make it back. No, he's run out of gas the worst place you can, just past pit entrance. Marty? It bobbled, it came back, Bill. He said it came back, but McMurray's fairly sure he's out of fuel, and it looks like this will be it for Jamie McMurray. He'll have a tough time making it back to pit road, Bill. Well, he's still under right. power, Marty, but, but you're right. I mean, if he bobbled getting off of 11, he's going to have a hard time making it all the way back around. There's Juan Pablo Montoya, the race leader, and Harvick in second. Montoya was told he wouldn't have enough fuel to make it to the finish, and that's what Harvick's team told him about Montoya, whereas Harvick should have enough fuel. Let her roll all you can. Let her roll all you can. Marty Snyder. 
Well, guys, Montoya trying to save all the fuel he can. You can feel the nerves down here in the 42 pit. This is a young man who grew up not having enough money for public transportation, he recalls. He used to take his rollerblades everywhere he would go. He got a shot in 1997 at the Formula 3000 season, and that was the break he was looking for. Finished second in that championship in his rookie year, and the F1 teams took notice. The Williams team picked him up, put him in their F3000 ride, won the championship, beat out Nick Heidfeld. Of course, the story is going to F1. And now here in Nexel Cup, on the verge of winning his first ever race, his wife Connie looks on. Can the fuel hold out for Montoya? Less than a lap ago, white flag in the air at Sonoma. Let's keep up with most speed he can through here. He's got about four seconds on Harvick right now, so if he can just drive it smooth and keep the thing running, he's got a good shot. He's done a great job today. I mean, he really has run aggressively, but he raced everybody pretty much clean. He's got a half a lap to go. All good. It's clear by like 30 or 40. All clear. Lots of room. There's Harvick in second. Montoya told Matt Yoakum earlier this week in the piece we ran earlier today that he didn't think his childhood childhood dream of becoming a professional racer would ever come true. But you don't get many professional racers coming out of this country. Okay, right. okay, right. okay. Final turn into 11. Then the short jog for turn 12. Juan Pablo Going Montoya to checker, coming Either to the checker right. flag. On. The fuel lives and Montoya wins at Sonoma. That's amazing. That is amazing. And there's a... Great job, everybody! Hell yeah! Good job, buddy. Good job, driver. Good job, everybody. Good job, Rudy. Good job, photo God. Get I second up. that. And <laughs> four! He's the first foreign-born driver to win a cup race since Canadian Earl Ross at Martinsville in 1974. And only the second ever. Juan Montoya is the winner. How about that? Flash. Between 13-2. Still a four-and-a-half second lead. And that's right, Andy. The only thing that could change the complexion of this race would be a caution. Two more laps, about five miles remaining. I want to you, I'd be just saving my brakes, saving my tires just for that restart, just in case, because he's got about five seconds that he can give up here in these next two laps. Well, over the last couple of weeks, everybody's heard the radio communications between his crew chief, Brian Patty, and Juan Pablo, and the fact that there has been some tension and stress. DJ? This is the kind of thing that can take all that <laughs> yeah, right away. Yeah. It's amazing how many times it happens in this sport, too. I can remember back when I was racing thinking that, you know, Gordon and Everham were having some problems and things. Okay, this is our time to strike. Next thing you know, they go on a two or three race binge and winning. And so uh, that's these guys are professionals. I'm sure that Chip Ganassi and Tony Glover got them together and said, look, guys, we've got a good thing going as Kirk Bush here closes in on Ambrose. But, uh, yeah, they can. this can do a lot to mend those wounds. Kurt Busch all over the back bumper of Marcus Ambrose as he has never won on the road course, but Kurt having a great run today. Does look like that left rear tire on Ambrose car. Boy, it looks like, yeah, definitely he's got some kind of problem now. Yeah. Well, he's got the inside track heading down into turn one, but yeah, boy, be careful. Here. Marcus breaks late and holds onto the position for now. Here comes Kurt. They go down and he finally clears him. And if he holds on to second, this will be his best road course finish ever. Prior to that was third back in Infineon in 2005. And he's pulling away from Marcus now. Yeah, Ambrose definitely has a problem. And uh, look to me like maybe that left rear tire was a little soft. Down through the bus stop. White flag has already been out. We are winding this race down. Does it Marcus have anything to get back to second? Because nobody is challenging this man, Juan Pablo Montoya. His last win, 113 starts ago at Infineon in June of 2007. Down through the final corner for the Good final job, time. Sorry about last week again. Did an awesome job. Way to go there, big boy. Good job. Good job. Juan Pablo Montoya, his job, second man. cup win. More than anybody else. Great job, everybody. 
We've been working really hard for this. This is what it's all about right here. Still got a battle further on as Kevin Harvick's fading back. Something's wrong with Harvick. Burton is going to get around him. You see McMurray, Stewart, Collin, and Gordon rounds out the top 10, and Harvick slips back to 11th. Going to the wire. Newman, Kenseth, Hornish, and Truex in the top 15. Then Paul Menard, Casey Kane, and look at this. Even further back, it is Brad Keselowski taking spot over Patrick Carpentier with Paul and Reagan rounding out the top 25. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., despite starting a very distant 40th today, comes home in 26. But there's your winner, Juan Pablo Montoya, with his second win in NASCAR's Cup.